Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I've been doing a series on all 32 teams from The Athletic. Because I like the writers there. They're really good. And uh, we just did the goaltender rankings, uh, where they're going to standings rankings, all that kind of stuff like that. Done by very good writers and uh, experts in the game. And then I'm going to put my spin on it. And I'm doing this totally out of reaction. I have not read it. I don't know what it's going to say. And I'm going to give my on-the-fly predictions as I do the predictions. And you're, what you're going to do, you're going to subscribe, hit the bell, uh, and uh, promote this channel because it is so much frolic. I'm getting so many people uh, that are giving me great comments, and I love it. And uh, also subscribing. Helen, 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 wake up. She's a little bit Helen. I'm going to need at least seven Pearls of Wisdom necklaces. I'm going to send you a Pearls of Wisdom necklace, all of you, if you subscribe right now. Uh, Pearl Ocopter to Your Door by Hernandez and Melissa, who is out in all, all the lands frolicking. I think Hernandez is off to uh, Hong Kong right now. Something like that. And uh, he'll be back later today. And uh, they're sending out the Pearls of Wisdom necklaces. So you smoke, smash that like button, hit the subscribe, and you'll be able to get some fun. I'm getting new swag too. I'm getting the Helmet of Pearl and the uh, the uh, Pearl O ring. You can have a Pearl O ring too. Tell me in the comment section which one do you want. And the Pearls of Wisdom bracelet as well. So, yeah, we're expanding. Okay, let's look at, well, this is all part of the uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like to find more major sports and all the all the uh, and teams within those four major sports, did I say five? Four. It's four major sports. You'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Also, you can come and join the frolic with me at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show between three and five Eastern daily. I quite often go after five, later than five, uh, but it starts at three Eastern. Oh, the frolic. We do predictions of the games and we give out virtual swag and oh, so much fun. Love to see you. Okay, let's take a look at these bold predictions. Arizona Coyotes. Uh, not really a prediction. I will end up watch. Oh, sorry. Let's go down to the Buffalo Sabres. Let me get over here first. There's a Buffalo Sabres first. Buffalo Sabres projected 70 points. Uh, oh, people will stop roasting Vogel's lineup between tweets because every time they do the lineup, the lineup doesn't look good. Uh, with Middlestat and Asplin and all of those sort of things like that. Uh, not not the greatest lineup in the world. But you know what? My bold prediction is that the Sabres will not be last this year. I believe they're going to be better than people think. I, I think that they won't even be last in their own division in the Atlantic. I think that will go to Detroit. Um, I think they're going to surprise. I it's hard to, again, you look at the lineup and you go, ah, really, dude? Really? And I'm like, I just love Granado. I think he's brought a fantastic energy this to this team. And from what I've seen so far, they haven't been that bad. They have been competitive. So 70 points, I'm going to say 77 points. How's that? But anyways, uh, Arizona Coyotes. Uh, just above, I think they will be the last team. I, I think Buffalo will be better than Arizona. Uh, first of all, they have Arizona's last year's uh, goaltender in Carter Hutton, and he is horrible. But I love this prediction. I will end up watching upwards of five Coyotes games this season, despite Arizona icing one of the most desolate rosters in recent memory. And I will probably watch more than that, actually. Um, I don't really watch many games from front to back because I watch so many games, but uh, I watch so many games at a time, but I just, I'm a diehard man. 
I am a diehard hockey fan. I watch it. I watch a di- divorce-worthy amount of hockey. So I'm with you on that. I think it'll be more. It's uh, it's not going to be fun for Arizona, though. I, I think Buffalo is going to beat them out. Anaheim Ducks. Uh, An- Anaheim Ducks are equi- unequivocally the worst league's most boring team. That's the that's the uh, bold prediction. They're going to be the most boring team. Uh, I'm still going to have an alternate on this news fest. Well, I hate to tell you this, but so far, beginning of the season, the Anaheim Ducks have actually looked pretty exciting. And uh, my bold prediction is they're going to be higher than this. Um, uh, I personally think that... Uh, Dallas Eakins, ooh, I got his name out. I usually forget it. Dallas Eakins is a better coach than people think. And as long as you got Gibson and a strong young energy, uh, the Spectavish kid looks fantastic. Drysdale and all that, I think they're going to be higher. We'll see where they have everybody else, but uh, let's see what's next. Columbus Blue Jackets. Man, you know what? It is tough to figure. I, I think Columbus might be better than people think too. I think Anaheim will be over Columbus, though. He thinks Cole Sillinger will stick around and not go back to junior. That's not really bold, but I don't think that's courageous at all. I think he's just shown up really well, and it's a fairly weak lineup. Uh I think he'll stick around. Okay, my bold prediction with that is Lion A will pot 30 this year, 30 to 35. I don't know how bold that is to you guys, but he hasn't played well, and I think he's going to do really well. 30 or plus, that's my bold prediction. Uh, Ottawa Senators, you know, Ottawa's looked really good as well. I I think they're going to be higher than this. There's a lot of teams I think are going to be bad that most people think are good, so... Uh, I'm going to have a pretty – Marty Murray will average two straight catastro- – make an actual limb, let's say, a .912 save percentage for Murray. My prediction for Murray is that he has to go to – he has to go to uh, assistance for some uh, things the, – the assistance program. I think he has some – Mental stuff he needs to work on. That's my prediction for Murray. Uh, I feel bad for the guy and really hope he does it, Dom says. Uh, He's a nice guy. That's enough reason to wish Murray the best in his endeavors. And I do wish Murray, and I do, but I do think there's a mental thing. I just don't see how a guy can be so good and then fall off a cliff so hard without possibly needing to take some time to have mental focus. So that's what I believe for the Ottawa Senators, and I also believe they will be higher than this. The Detroit Red Wings, I believe they will be lower. I believe the Detroit Red Wings will be second or so, second or third lowest in the league. Um, Not that they have a terrible team that they're building here. Uh, It's just they still aren't cohesive yet, and... They're right on the brink. My other bold prediction is that Sider will still win Rookie of the Year. Maurice Sider will win Rookie of the Year. Um, So that's a pretty bold prediction. I think he's fantastic. Um, Stevie Eiserman does not have a guy come in and play at that young. He's 20 years old. And... As a defenseman, unless he like totally believes in this guy, I've from what I've seen of him, I've loved everything. I I gotta admit, it hasn't been lots, but every time I see him, the guy looks well beyond his years. So that's my prediction. He wins rookie of the rookie. If he wins the Calder. Next, Los Angeles Kings way too low. Who am I gonna put low? As we keep on going here. Way too low. My prediction, I already had it in my, if you saw my season predictions, my standings prediction, I have the Los Angeles Kings second in the Pacific. 
and making the playoffs. The Kings struggle to take the next step forward in their rebuild and will finish last in the Pacific. Totally disagree. Not sure why, but this is my favorite take on the board. Freeze up more assets for Eichel. Yeah, sure, it would be great, but I, I don't think so. I think giving Kopitar more room to move with getting down O is a great move. And I, I see a lot of their young players in a very underrated defense doing well in a very weak Pacific. If they were in a lot of in other divisions, I probably wouldn't say this, but I think they finish higher than this. Next, San Jose Sharks. Uh, I got to put them here, but again, all these teams that people think are not going to be good, I think could be a lot better than people think. I think Kane, uh, okay, I got to make a prediction here. What's the prediction? Uh, the Sharks are in playoff spot halfway through the season thanks to a miraculous career resurgence. Of, they end up missing the playoffs by only a few points. Yeah, I agree. Something of that nature. Does that put them 25th? I suppose it probably will. But because they're in a weak division. However, I could actually, when you have an energy change with a guy like Evander Kane, who apparently was miserable, and I'm, unlike a lot of people, I am not all over this guy saying he's, he, again, he's a guy who just needs some help to get back on track again. Uh, he's got a gambling issue. Apparently, he's miserable all the time. Re I've talked to reporters that say he was, rem I haven't talked to them, but I've read a read about reporters who said he's miserable all the time. I think a change in that energy will change that team quite a bit. Um, Vancouver Canucks, and I think Vancouver is going to be lower than this. I, I was Last year I was all over Vancouver, but the more I look at this defense, the more I don't know if it's going to happen. I think they could be lower than the San Jose Sharks. I think they could be the worst team in the Pacific, believe it or not, or close to it. Uh, that's the thing, is Elias Pettersson could get a 100-point season. That could change things. Uh, I just don't – I don't like this team overall. I think the defense is too soft, um, not very good defensively, pretty much everybody. Uh, it, it's just Demko. It's Demko. Demko will be great, and they'll still won't win – a lot of games, they'll have to outscore teams too much, and they don't have the offense to outscore teams that much. They have great offense. Their top nine looks great. It looks pretty darn good. But it also looks fairly small, and uh, when, you're, when they're playing from behind, it's going to be a lot more difficult to score. So, yeah, my bold prediction for this is that Vancouver is close to the bottom of the league. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Now, I would have – Seth Jones, I think, will have a lot of offense this year. He'll get about 50 to 60 points, but everybody's going to see that he's not good defensively. That Jones will be a Norris caliber or utterly horrific, and that is true. I, it's one or the other. He's either going to get tons of points – and be in the Norris, but his he is not good defensively, okay? He's not. And uh, the, there's no debate on that. I've watched him over and over and over again in Columbus. He's not good defensively. So I think he, and as far as the Chicago Blackhawks are concerned, I was all over them before the season started. But now... I've changed my tune. I think this is about right for them. Uh, and I know you can say, well, they lost three. Easy to say that. But it's the way they lost. I think Flurry's really not happy to be there. And Flurry is a very emotional goaltender. And if Flurry's not happy, he doesn't stop pucks. And if, they, if they're not stopping pucks and they know that Flurry's not happy, that lineup is pretty young. And can be heavily affected by that. So, yeah, I think they're not going to do well. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers. I don't know. This is the one thing. Valigno, Alan Vangio will be the first coach to get fired. I'm with that. I think so. And I don't know if he deserves it. Um, I just don't think this lineup is going to make it. I've 
tried to tell myself I'm a Philadelphia Flyers fan. I've tried to tell myself that this team's going to make it from the beginning of the year. But honestly, I don't think they're going to make it this year. And it's horrific if they don't because there's not much they can do. It's, uh, I don't think that de- the defense is good enough. I didn't like the pickup of Rista Linen. We'll find out if he's if he is uh, going to make it. But the big thing for me is Carter Hart. Now, he, had, he struggled in the first game, but it looked better later. If he goes off, I think they're a bubble team. And Alan Bangio still gets fired. Uh, New Jersey Devils, bold prediction. Yes, I agree. Jack Hughes takes a massive leap towards superstar status and scores at a 90-point pace. Totally agree. I don't know if that's bold or not, but I'm all over Jack Hughes. I don't know. If people not watch New Jersey play, yeah, he didn't put many points up, but the kid, is was his size was not that great, but his skill level was insane. Like, I love the guy. Uh, I think Hughes will definitely be up there, and I think New Jersey just barely makes the playoffs, so this is probably right about it. They could make it. I just, I really, oh yeah, by the way, I forgot about that. Bernier, my other prediction, Bernier takes over the number one for Blackwood, and not because Blackwood plays poorly. It's just Bernier plays that good. I don't know how anybody didn't notice him in Detroit the last two years, Probably because a lot of people don't watch Detroit because they haven't been very good. But people that are diehards, like the people talking here in The Athletic and me, probably have watched him a lot. And that guy stopped pucks like freaking crazy. So, uh, yeah, I I think he'll take it over. That's my bold prediction. Montreal Canadiens way lower. I think Montreal Canadiens are going to be one of the worst below Ottawa. But like right down there in Detroit, I think this is going to be hor- a horrific season. That's my bold prediction for Montreal this year. They're coming off of a high. Uh, things don't go well early because they lost Weber and all of that. And all of, it, it's so weird when you go off of a high and making the finals like that, or a or a team, and things they struggle early. All of a sudden they. All of a sudden, it's like uh, how do I? It's like a catastrophic emotional roller coaster, and you lose confidence as fast as you got it. So I and with uh, the very young lineup, I didn't like Savard replacing for Weber. I don't think he had a great year last year. Just overall, I don't think Montreal is going to do well this year, and it might be best for them because they need a, a bold prediction. Cole Caulfield will score forty goals. Uh, he was our runaway Calder pick for a reason, but I, I'm all in immediately. Okay, I don't agree with that. I think he gets about 25. So we'll see. But I think eventually he'll be a regular 40-goal scorer, but not this year because all you got to do is take out their number one line this year, Montreal's number one line, and you pretty much have won the game. So people are going to be focusing on them like crazy. Love Suzuki, love Caulfield. has nothing to do with their talent. It's just the way the lineup is set up this year. I don't think that you're going to see a 40-pointer from Caulfield. Next, uh, Calgary Flames projected way lower. Okay, these are the teams that I had way lower. 92 per Goudreau scores over 100 points. No way he scores over 100 points. I don't think Coleman, the Coleman pickup did much of anything. I think Sutter is uh, unfortunately stifling the creativity of a guy like Goudreau with his style that he has that I think was effective 10 years ago. I'm not sure it's as effective now. Uh, I don't think he's going to – and Sean agrees that he doesn't agree with the take. I think the Calgary Flames are one of the worst teams in the league. There's my bold predictions. One of my bold predictions. I don't think this team's into gel. I wouldn't be surprised to see Goudreau traded at the deadline and a bunch of other trades as well and a full rebuild in Calgary. So there's my bold prediction. St. Louis Blues, also lower. Um, I don't think they make the playoffs. I don't like their defense. 
However, they've looked really good to start the season. If Bennington crushes, this makes sense. But I got to see it because I don't like the looks of their defense. Uh, Falk, Krug, uh, Pareko coming back. If he, he, he missed a lot of time. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not a big fan. The Blues become a profitable team to bet on. I stopped saying how much I hate them in every power rankings. Uh, I just I don't think it's all going to come together from for them. And th that being said, it, it could go either way. If Buchnevich and Saad work in well in this lineup and they muster, uh, a, um, they 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 meld well with their line mates. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They find chemistry. My gosh, I failed chemistry heavily. Now I can't even remember the name of what it is. Uh, anyways, then, then they could, but I'm saying they're going to be lower. Uh, I think they're going to be, ooh, who are they going to be below? I think LA is going to be higher than them. So not much lower, but a little lower. There's a couple teams that they have that I have ahead of the St. Louis blues. Um, next. Okay. Seattle Kraken. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess somewhere around here. It's safe to put them somewhere in the middle because nobody really knows. Um, from what I've seen so far, I think they're going to be about a 500 team. Uh, Jared McCann scores 70 points. Totally agree. I think he's going to be their leading scorer and get 70 points. So not much to say about that. I uh, what? Any other prediction of that? It's such a vanilla team. It's a very vanilla team. It's a Ron Francis team. There's not much to it. Um, I Here's a prediction. They're going to be middle of the pack for like the next 10 years. That's it. They're going to always be right on the playoff bubble. Not much better than they are now for the next 10 years. That's my prediction. Uh, Winnipeg Jets at 15. Sure. Could be anywhere around here, somewhere around there. Uh, could be higher, but ne throws up a 90-point season. I don't know how bold that is, but if I've watched him, I'd say he could pot 40 goals this year. Uh, cares one. Kyle Connor gets 50. So with all of that, I should be saying that he's going to be higher. The problem here is I've seen some issues in Hollabuck's game as of late, uh, the last year or so that has me a little concerned, and they don't have a backup. Really, that, that much. Comrie has not been very successful in the NHL so far. So, But I will say that that is a fair assessment that he gets 90 points. How bold it is, I don't know. I don't know why. No. Yeah, this is about right for Dallas, I think. So his hints is completely healthy for a whole season. Uh, I think that's about right. Uh, I think that's a good – and it is bold because he always gets injured. He's been getting injured as of young. I think he just had growing issues and strength issues, and he'll be fine this year. I'll also say that Ropo Hintz gets a point a game this year. Anywhere between 50 and 95. I think he gets a point a game, Dallas Star, And the Dallas Stars – yeah, Bo Ray here. They make the playoffs, and uh, they they have a shot. I also think, okay, here's another bold prediction. Remember, I'm doing this right off the top of my head. Ottinger beats out everybody this year for the number one spot, eventually, when they bring him up from the AHL. New York Rangers. I thought I have okay. I had the New York Rangers being second in the Metro this year. Not a single Ranger fights Tom Wilson this season. I don't doubt that at all. But my other prediction will be uh, Lafreniere scores thirty. Lafreniere scores thirty this year. Now, from what I've seen from the Rangers so far, it's taken a little bit. Gallant's got some work to do to get those guys going in the right direction. So we'll see. But 
That's my bold prediction for the New York Rangers. Uh, oh, Shesterkin, Forder is on winning the Besna this year. That's the other one. Washington Capitals. This is too. I don't think the Washington Capitals are going to make the playoffs. So that's my bold prediction. Oh, and they have it too. This is the playoffs by a lot. Projected 95 points. So I think every, a lot of people in Washington are thinking the same thing. So I don't really think that's a bold pr prediction. But Ovechkin still pots 40 goals. That's my prediction. And uh, Samsonov starts to come to, they start to come to the realization that Samsonov's not our number one. Those are my predictions for Washington. Remember, I'm doing this all off the top of my head. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes, uh, great. I, I, I think Tony D'Angelo will be great in Carolina, period. End of story. I think he's going to get close to a point a game, 70 points this year. Uh, no punching teammates, no weirdo podcasts. Uh, whitest call I make. I think he will too. I think he's going to like it in Carolina. And he's going to do well. And I think it was probably a lot of it was overblown. Number 10, Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, I have them missing the playoffs, and I'm probably going to be wrong. My bold prediction is that Sullivan wins the Adams this year. That's my bold prediction. Uh, Chris Look Tang is going to win the Norris. Sorry. Game control of my peep. Rob Rossi game control of my keyboard. Other than sincerely thinking they're going to finish second in the division, I'd love to say they're going to be on the periphery of a playoff hunt in the deadline. Okay. Uh, he almost put down Brian Rust, leads the team in points. But he's my, my there's not really a bold prediction there. My bold prediction is that's, that uh, Sullivan gets his first Adams. Minnesota Wild, I got to put him here. I had Minnesota almost missing it. Watching them again, I don't know, I must have had amnesia. Dean Evison is brilliant, and he could win the Adams as well. I think he'll come close too. But um, I think they're going to score an awful lot more this year, and so does he, even though they have lost a few players. Um, but Evison comes second. Bold prediction in scouting or scouting in for the Adams and Kaprizov gets over a point a game. I don't know how bold that is, but uh, Florida Panthers, I think this is low. I think they're going to win the whole Shibuto. I think they're going to be first overall. Uh, maybe, yeah. $10 million goalie again. Yes, Bobrovsky turns it around this year, and I believe that too. I've and, and I admit it's just coming off his first two games, but I think I've seen enough in his first two games to see the old Bobrovsky back. I don't know what happened to him, where his head was at, but he looks good. And uh, the, the combination of Bobrovsky, who's well-improved, and Spencer Knight, who's like a hotshot, brilliant kid, will be enough to get this team to be first overall. So that's pretty bold. I'm taking them to be first overall. The only thing that could prevent them from being first overall is that they're in such a difficult division. That's going to make it difficult, but we'll see. New York Islanders. Um, I, I think the Islanders will be lower than the Florida, and I don't. We'll see. They've they've struggled early. It's this 13-game road trip to start off with and how they bounce back from that. Because they're probably going to be below 500 after 13 games. And then they're going to have to to come back. Uh, they're going to, oh, only to bow out in the opening round. I think it'll be the opposite. I think, like usual, the Islanders will barely make the playoffs and, again, will go on a run in the playoffs. Uh, Edmonton Oilers, McDavid will get scores over 150 points. I don't even, is that bold anymore? I'm all over. I'll, I'll take that further. McDavid gets 160 points and scores over 40 goals 
uh, close to 50 goals, which is something that has been his biggest weakness is his shot. He worked on it all summer. Uh, he That's what he dedicated his summer to, is getting his shot better. He already hit a one-time slap shot from like Ovechkin area this year. I, I think he's going to get 100. I think he can get two points average a game. That's my bold prediction for the Edmonton Oilers. My other bold prediction is that Puglia Harvey gets 35. Plus, my other bold prediction is that the Oilers have one of the worst defenses in the league and still win, come second or first in their division. There you go. Boston Bruins. Wow, this is high for Boston. Um, Charlie McAvoy wins in Norris. Yeah, maybe if McCarr can't crush it. I think it's going to be between McAvoy and McCarr. I think Fox is going to not take a step back this year, but won't get as much notice because he won it last year. And Charlie McAvoy is going to be taking another step forward, and he could have won it last year. If they would have gave it to Charlie McAvoy last year, I wouldn't have argued too much. Like, he was everything for Boston's defense last year, and now he's going to have a very underrated for forward as a partner a lot. Uh, so... A better a better lineup, defensive lineup in general. So, yeah, he could definitely crush it here. No doubt about it. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, bold prediction. Uh, I think I feel now we're not far away from decline. Oh, he's saying that Stamkos has a crushing year to make the Team Canada lineup. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Nothing will surprise me from Stamkos. Uh, he's gone through so many injuries. Uh, he's lit it up already so far this year. Uh, I could definitely see that. I don't know what the bold prediction for Tampa is, except that I don't think I think they're going to be middle of the pack in their division because I think they're going to, if any injuries happen this year with how much hockey they played the last couple of years, if they're close to injured at all, they won't play. So they could have some, you know, Nights where they don't have a full lineup and they end up losing. And I, I think they end up taking it easy like they did last year a little bit. Last year in the regular season, Tampa didn't look good. That's why I said that Vasilevsky should have got the um, should have got the Vesna last year. But I get it. I love Flurry and I'm glad he got it. But really, Vasilevsky was the best goaltender last year. Um, so my bold prediction is that they don't do as well as people think in the regular season. Vegas Golden Knights, my prediction here is that they're out in the first round in the playoffs. That's what I think. Um, unless they do something for their center position. I thought getting Patrick was not a good move. He's terrible for the energy of a team. Um, uh, Pacioretty, I'll tell you, a lot of people have mentioned it. It's been mentioned everywhere he goes. He's not the greatest leader in the world. And, of course, we know Fleury gone and uh, Laner in. Laner is an awesome goaltender. He's just a little disruptive in the room from what I gather. That's why he's gone to so many places. And he's got a style that's very difficult to play around. So my prediction is they're out in the first round. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs, oh, they, he says the Leafs win three rounds. My bold prediction, well, it all depends on what they do at the deadline. He thinks that they're going to win three rounds in the playoffs. Some play, seven games, but this team has a potential for an even higher form of comedy. Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to the one round and out again one more time. That's. It depends on who they get at the deadline. There's so much lack of depth on this lineup that I think their stars could be pooched by playoff time. So cool, bold, bold prediction, but I don't see it. And finally, Colorado Avalanche, and he picking them to win the cup as basic as it gets. Uh, yes. So he thinks that Kale McCarr is going to lead the team in scoring, but not win, not win the Norris. That's weird. I think McCarr wins a Norris. Uh, and what's to predict that everybody doesn't know? 
There's no bold prediction here. Except that they trade, do a package to trade Kadri at the deadline to get a better second line center. There you go. That's my bold prediction. Also, if it's not Vasilevsky, Darcy Kemper wins the Vesna. There we go. That was pretty bold. Okay, that's my full 42. Little Perlo dance for y'all. Sub up. Come see me live. I'll be doing many more of these. I hope you enjoy the fine programming. Till next time. Okay, bye.